Welcome to another tutorial in What's New in Motion 4. In this lesson we're going to have a look at shadows, real shadows. In the past you would fake shadows by turning the drop shadow on, but now with Motion 4 we can have real shadows cast by real lights. The first thing we're going to do is set up a scene, because if you can have real shadows you need something that the shadow is going to be cast on, so we're going to create a back wall and maybe a floor. I'm going to use the rectangle tool for this, so you can come up to the rectangle tool up here or you can click R if you like shortcuts and I'm going to click on the screen I'm just going to drag full size. Now although a fluorescent green is probably not a good colour to use for your floor and wall it's quite a good colour to use while you're setting up so I'll leave that on green move my heads up display down a little bit and I'm going to call that back wall so just double click on rectangle hit return and what I'm going to do is add a camera as well so come up to the top to your toolbar click new camera switch to 3D and then over on the right hand side in my camera tools I'm just going to click on the orbit tool and click and drag down and slightly to the left and then over to the dolly tool click and drag upwards and it pushes the scene away from you so there's my back wall I can add a little bit more angle on that when working in 3D it's quite hard to line things up if you haven't got a nice angle if you're too front on you won't be able to see how everything's interacting so I'll duplicate the back wall, I'm going to select it and then Command D on my keyboard that's duplicate, rename it straight away and let's call this floor and also I'm going to change the colour so I can see where the two planes intersect come down to my heads up display you can click on the colour well here if you like and click and drag around, that works well or you can click on the little downward arrow which I tend to do, I'm going to put a slightly lighter green in now this is the floor so I need to rotate it round and I need to rotate it around this axis which is my X axis if you hover on the circles you can see the different rotation axes so the one I want is the one at the top I want to rotate it backwards or forwards on this axis if you hold your shift key down and click and drag it will pop to 45 degree increments so that's 45 and then again that's 90 and then let go of your mouse before you let go of your modifier so there's my floor, I need to move it forward and down a little bit, maybe down here somewhere. When you're clicking and moving in 3D space it's a very good idea not to just click and drag anywhere because it will move all over the place and do that. Instead hover on the arrows and when they light up you can click and drag. So I'm going to drag it down near the bottom, maybe about there, and then move on to the other arrowhead at the back, click and drag, drag it forward. I go up to my orbit tool and rotate round you can see there's a little bit of overlap that won't be a problem unless of course you get an angle like this but I'm not too worried about that so this is for demonstration purposes I'm just going to position this like this so I can see what's going on this is the move tool I'm moving the camera around I'm trying to center this up a little bit get rid of this word copy so my scene is set up ready to go now I need to add something to cast a shadow so I'm going to use text up to my text tool which is up the top here or you can click T on your keyboard I'm just going to click on screen and type 3D shadows and then escape on your keyboard or click on the arrow tool to get out of text mode now something you may have noticed is that the text is facing me if I turn my scene you can see it's not lining up really with the other objects and this is something to do with setting up your camera if I had moved square on before I had created my text, it would have created the text square on and flat to the back wall. I'll show you this, I'll delete this text and I'll double click my camera tools to reset to front view, select my text, type this in again, 3D shadows, hit escape, and then come up to my orbit tool and orbit round, dolly out a bit. You see now it's set it up square. So there's my text. Now I need a light, so I'm going to come up to the object menu and choose new light. Now the light is very close to everything here, so I'm going to move it backwards. Again, hovering on the arrowheads is probably the best way to do it. I'm going to pull my light back a little bit, maybe up a little bit. I'm moving over to my heads up display. I'm just going to change to a spotlight. It's on point at the moment. I'm going to change to spot so I can see the edges of my light. Now when I move it, can see where it ends. Now no 3D shadows yet, 
There's probably a couple of reasons for that. One is because the text is sitting on the background, so I need to move it forward away from the wall. So I'm going to select my text, click on the blue arrowhead and move forward. Still no shadows. Reselecting my light, you can see in the heads up display that it's turned off. By default, shadows are turned off because they're heavy to render. So if you don't need them, don't turn it on. So I'll turn this on and there's my 3D shadow. And it is a real 3D shadow. If I select the text and move it around, you can see the shadow goes with it. If I move closer to the object, the shadow gets closer to the point where it disappears. And the further I move it away, the further the shadow goes. If I select the light and move it around, you can see that the shadow moves in an opposite direction because it's a real shadow. If my light's down here and it's hitting the text coming up, the shadow will be up top. I move the light up, the light's coming down, hitting the text and the shadow will be underneath. I'm going to dolly in a little bit so we can see the shadow. I'm just going to centre the scene up. Now you do have some options for your shadows. Selecting the light and then coming over to the inspector and selecting the light tab down here. You can see at the bottom it says shadows. I'm going to open that up and you get a few options. Now one of them is uniform softness. Now uniform softness means that the shadow has a hard edge all the way around. Well that's not a very realistic shadow. A shadow will be hard where the object is close to the shadow and will be softer as the shadow moves away. If I select the back wall and rotate it round slightly. So now the shadow will be closer here and further away up here and then turn off the uniform softness. I should get it softer at the top. I'll reselect the light, turn off uniform softness. Not much difference yet, but I'll increase the softness up. And now you can see it's sharper here than it is at this edge. If I reselect the text and move it a little bit closer, it might be a little bit more obvious. And then rotate the back wall round a bit more. And increase my light. There you can see it now. I'll dolly in a little bit and centre this up. So you can see the shadow is sharp here and softer here. If I turn uniform softness back on again, you'll see that it gives a very soft shadow. The softness is now working right the way across the whole shadow. So if you have none, you get a very sharp shadow. So that would be a hard shadow. And if you drag this up to the top, you get a soft shadow, so it's all dissipated. If you turn off uniform softness, you get what is commonly called an area shadow which is a hard shadow where the object touches the background and a soft shadow where it's moved away. Just one other thing to note is that the shadow doesn't have to be black. You can change the colour here and have a coloured shadow. So if you wanted to match the green, you could put one in here or a slightly yellow, something like that. It doesn't have to be a hard black shadow, but they do stand out the most. A couple of other little things to note about shadows. The spotlight gives me the option of a shadow. Point light gives me the option of a shadow, but a direction light does not, and neither does an ambient light. So if you're going to use shadows, choose spot or point. So that's the end of the lesson on the new shadows in Motion 4. I'm Jerry Lear from motiontemplate.co.uk.